Hello, this is Daniel from Samdance Couch. Today I'm going to look at Dirac Live Base Control, the latest add-on for the much celebrated room correction software Dirac Live. I will put it to the test with my OnQ RZ50 AV receiver and find out how much more it can improve the sound over the already great sounding base version of Dirac Live. I have been using Dirac Live for over two and a half years in conjunction with my OnQ RZ50 and my UMIG-1 microphone, which I have both reviewed on this channel as well. Together with my Monitor Audio Bronx speakers and my SVS PB1000 Pro subwoofer, Dirac Live manages to lift my sound to a new level, making everything sound more cleaner and more cohesive in general. I have changed my speakers and switched rooms for my sound setup several times the past years and enhanced my sound with Dirac Live's room correction every time. Now Dirac released the optional paid bass control add-on, which promises to eliminate variations between listening positions and to allow smooth, even bass distribution throughout your room, delivering deeper, smoother and punchier bass regardless of the position of the subwoofer. This add-on works with one subwoofer as well as several subwoofers. There are no limitations. The OnQ RZ50 cannot independently control the volume of two subwoofers, but bass control takes this into account as well, when you have more than one subwoofer connected. I am running a 5.1 Dolby Atmos system right now, with one subwoofer connected. And as it is, my room is not the perfect room for perfect acoustics, and I had to set up my speakers as the room dictates it, which is making the use of room correction even more important and really puts the system to the test. Placing your subwoofer at the perfect position is not always possible, especially if you don't have a whole room just dedicated for a home movie theater and live for example in an apartment. So the subwoofer becoming locatable by your ears can become a problem when you want even sound distribution from your sound system. The basic version of Dirac Live always did a good job making my surround sound system sound better but sometimes I was still able to hear where the point of crossover was occurring. The crossover is the area of frequencies where at the set frequency point the frequencies are filtered off the main speakers and then played back by the subwoofer instead. It always felt like it to me that there was a slight hole between the low lows of the main speakers and the high lows of the subwoofer. This is something bass control promises to fix, so let's see how well it will work on my setup. Let's get started and get the bass control add-on and the latest version of Dirac Live. When you already own a Dirac Live license, just log into your account on the Dirac website and go to your profile, selecting Shop. Then you get this long list of supported devices where you select your device that you own. In my case, it is the Onkyo RZ50. And from here, you can directly buy the license, which will get added to your account right away after the payment process is completed. Base control is priced at $299 or around €275 Euro, and only works for the device you just chose. I am downloading the latest version of Dirac Live for my computer running macOS 10. Before I launch the app, I need to make sure that my AV receiver has the latest firmware update installed. And as it turns out, I have to update my RZ50 to add the base control functionality. The update process took around 20 minutes and worked without a problem. It is time to launch the Dirac Live app and when you do that for the first time on a macOS 10 computer, make sure to give permission to the Dirac Live app to be able to scan the network for devices. Now you can load a previously made Dirac Live filter into the app and then just add base control. Unfortunately on my computer and my saved filter, trying to go back to a previous session led to a crash of the app. But that isn't a big deal for me since I want to start completely over with my Dirac Live measurements anyway. And I also recommend that you do that as well, to have a complete fresh start with how your room sounds at its current state. The calibration process. I previously made a guide on how to use Dirac Live on this channel, so I won't go into too much detail on this video. Link is in the description of this video. First I set up my UMIG-1 mic on a microphone stand and place it in the primary listening position. My microphone is connected via USB to my computer. 
Once all the volumes of each speaker and my subwoofer are correctly adjusted, I am moving forward, letting the test tone do its magic. I encountered a problem with my front right bookshelf speaker, which sits in a cubby on a shelf. The speaker was vibrating hard when running the initial test tone. I quickly figured out the problem. Since the back part of my speaker faces a wall, the bass was way too emphasized, making the internal components of the speaker vibrate. Putting a foam plug inside the back part of the speaker solved this problem, and I am continuing running my calibration for each measuring position. Once all the measuring positions are done, I see the first results of my measurements. On the right side of the app, we have three new buttons. The first button gives us access to the standard Dirac Live Room Correction that we know and love. The second button is called Base Management, which is a new and free addition to Dirac Live. It automatically determines the crossover settings for each speaker. You can manually change the crossover settings as well if you wanted to, and export a new Dirac Live filter from here with a click on the button Proceed to Filter Export. And the third button gives us access to Base Control. You can manually change the calculated crossover settings here for each individual speaker as well, but I leave it at its determined settings. You can also see here how Base Control set a target curve to boost the bass and smoothen over the crossover section. This is also completely adjustable, but I do trust the automatic algorithm and click the Calculate button on the lower right. Base Control does its calculations for all connected speakers and subwoofers. This can take a little while depending on how many speakers you have set up and how powerful the computer is that you are using. And once it is done, I can just transfer the brand new filter to my OnQ receiver. The RZ50 has three safe slots for Dirac Live filters. So for this test, I'm not only keeping the regular Dirac Live filter, I will also save a filter with the regular base management enabled. And of course a filter that I have just made with base control enabled. Live demo. I'm going to play you a song that we have created for our channel to demonstrate the differences between the three Dirac Live modes. As there are the regular Dirac Live room correction, the Dirac Live with bass management, and last but not least Dirac Live with bass control. Please keep in mind that this sound demo doesn't reflect the sound quality of the room correction nor the speakers. Recording a room is never an ideal thing, but it can demonstrate how big the differences between the three modes are and give you an idea of differences in sound. I highly recommend that you are using headphones for this part of the video, since you want to especially listen to the differences in bass. Xbox, Nintendo, or PC, what should we play? From retro to future, we'll keep it coming your way. Sound Dance Couch, so like and subscribe today. Sound Dance Couch, welcome to Sound Dance Couch. Xbox, Nintendo, or PC, what should we play? From retro to future, we'll keep it coming your way. Sound Dance Couch, so like and subscribe today. Whoa, Sound Dance Couch, welcome to Sound Dance Couch. My impression. This is what I'm hearing when comparing all three filters to each other. 
The regular Dirac Live mode. Having used this mode for a long time, it always sounded very good, clean and direct to me. Comparing it now to the other two new filter modes though, the music sounds more hollow in comparison. It doesn't have as much punch nor deep bass as when using the bass management or bass control modes. The bass management filter has definitely better and more powerful bass. And if you don't have bass control yet, I would pick this filter over the regular Dirac Live filter. But to my ears, it sounds like there is a gap right around the crossover frequency, which makes sense since bass management only determines the crossover settings, but does not do any computational work on smoothing this area over, which bass control delivers. By missing this feature, it makes the deep bass stay more separated from the remaining part of the music coming from the main speakers. With the third filter featuring bass control, the music sounds complete and well-rounded. There is no sound gap at the crossover frequency anymore and the bass smoothly transitions from the main speakers over to the subwoofer. The speakers are perfectly marrying to the subwoofer. The bass also has more punch to it in general and that is more punch not only in the deepest parts of the song, it is powerful all the way around without being overwhelming at the same time. I'm impressed already how much better my setup sounds now with the help of bass control. Listening to more music. What about some other music? I always liked playing the soundtrack of my teenage years when listening to new speakers and headphones, to be able to properly judge them. And this soundtrack of mine is Guns N' Roses with their two Use Your Illusion albums. I'm very familiar with the songs and I couldn't wait to compare the different Dirac Live filters with it. With the standard Dirac Live filter, I did miss the iconic bass from Duff and the powerful bass drum from Matt Sorum. It was there, but not as pronounced as I like it to be. Now listening to the same songs with bass control enabled, I definitely get a clean and punchy version of the bass as well as the drums, which is awesome. Compared to the regular bass management filter, the instruments sound even more cohesively mixed and the songs sound better than ever. As a good example of very well mixed Dolby Atmos music is the song Nothing is Lost from The Weeknd, which makes you feel like being in a movie theater when listening to it. And with bass control enabled, the whole song sounds more bombastic than ever before. For some different kind of music, I'm listening to the German band Deichkind. The song Keine Party has a powerful constant beat. With my new bass control filter, I can hear the lyrics clearly while the bass doesn't sound disconnected from the rest of the song, nor does it drown the rest of the song either, retaining its punch and connecting to the rest of the instruments perfectly. With just bass management, the beat is actually a little too present for my taste, and it is not as integrated as it is with bass control. For the rock segment, I like to listen to the band Meneskin with her song Blah Blah Blah. The bass drum is very present and drives the entire song with its power, which bass control really takes this up front. For some classic rock, I listen to Tom Paddy and the Heartbreakers. A one-story town sounds clean and the bass is nicely present while not being overwhelmingly up front. Testing with music that is a little older helps determine if there's too much and over-exaggerated bass in your filter settings. But in the case of my bass control enhanced filter, the music sounds very even. Old classic rock songs sound as clean as they never did before and are enjoyable as always. For my final test, I let Iggy Azalea make it bounce. In its Dolby Atmos mix, the sound bounces through all speakers, which are all very well adjusted by Dirac Live and the surround rear speakers are closing up the room behind the listener, while the deep bass bounces very powerful. In general, I can say about the two standard Dirac Live filters that the regular Dirac Live filter sounds a little thinner in comparison and a little hollow if you don't have any of the bass modes taking into the calculation. The deep bass is present but is more brutal and can be a little unpleasant at times while also sounding a bit hollow at the same time. Especially bass play can disappear in some songs a little bit in the background of songs and deep bass drum kicks can lose its punch. The free version of bass management gives you more punch but it doesn't close the gap that occurs at the crossover section, leaving the mid to higher low bass a little weak at times. Conclusion With my hands-on experience with bass control, 
I can say that I am very positively surprised how much more base control brings to the table to enhance what is already the state of the art room correction. The room feels more evenly filled with sound, especially when running everything in surround sound like Dolby Atmos, and the bass is more encompassing. And what's great about this filter is that your listening volume doesn't even need to be high. When I'm just casually listening to music at low volumes, the sound still retains its punch, precision and its deep bass. At $299 or 279 euro, the price is definitely not cheap and I can understand if this is a deterrent at first, jumping on board with bass control. But if you consider how much money you have already spent on good speakers and a nice AV receiver, going the extra mile with adding bass control to your system is worth it in my opinion. The smoothening of the crossover does make a big difference in sound quality. I'm also glad that the filter is a one-time purchase and doesn't follow the trend of making this function a subscription. My SVS PB1000 Pro subwoofer can now shine even better and gets more of a workout in every situation. For home theater, music and gaming, I wouldn't want to miss the extra fine-tuned Dirac Live filter anymore. And if you have more than one subwoofer, bass control is going to take that into account and smoothen the bass all across the room as well. It made my setup sound so much better, as if I walked out and bought a brand new set of speakers. I'd like to thank Dirac for their support letting me test Dirac Live bass control and they are always happy to help their customers out if there are any questions. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to this channel if you would like to see more of my videos, cool tech reviews and games. It really helps me to make more content for you in the future. Until then, I will see you next time on Sam Dan's Couch. Sam Dan's Couch. Welcome to Sam Dan's